Remember, there were recent plane crashes in Russia. Which one of them? 850, A22, Su34, Su35. Uh, my god, so much is falling, you probably can't keep up with my news. I'm Maria Druska, and today, as I promised, I will tell you about the new information regarding the Russian military transport aircraft Il-76 and what America has to do with it, as well as about a naval battle in Crimea, Ukrainian style, and not just a naval, but also aerial. Well, of course, it's hard to call it a battle, and about the situation on the front, but let's discuss everything in order. If you haven't watched my previous news video, I advise you to watch it. I will leave the link in the description below. I go into details there and lay out all the known facts in order they appeared. But to summarize, on January 24, in the Belarus region of Russia, a Russian military transport aircraft Il-76 crashed. The Russian Federation immediately announced that the plane was carrying 65 Ukrainian prisoners of war for exchange. But they somehow did not hurry to provide evidence, photos of fields strewn with bodies or anything else. By the way, the first satellite photos from the crash site of the Il-76 have appeared online. The footage shows the crash site and the trail it left upon crashing. The length of the trail stretched for about 500 meters. The death of three members of the Russian crew was confirmed to journalists by their relatives. However, information about the prisoners who might have been on board has not been confirmed. But what is this? What a coincidence! Just as we are outraged by the lack of evidence, as if they heard us. Here you go. Yesterday, the Russian investigative committee showed tattoos on the bodies of as claimed Ukrainian prisoners of war who crashed in the Il-76 in the Belgorod region. The department asserts that all bodies have been identified. In total, more than 670 bodies fragments of the deceased, as well as partially preserved personal documents, were discovered and removed in the area of the plane crash. The results of genetic examinations have led to a definitive conclusion on the belongings of the extracted body fragments of six crew members, three military police officers and 65 Ukrainian servicemen who died as a result of the attack on January 24, 2024. Russian Department writes. So what do we have, comrades? For some reason, the bodies of Russian crew members did not disintegrate into small particles, but ended up in the morgue intact, while the 65 Ukrainian prisoners, it seems, disintegrated. But they disintegrated in such a way that only the tattoos shown in this video remained intact. Just not a scratch on them. What a coincidence. Of course, we will wait, perhaps indeed someone from the families of these deceased Ukrainian prisoners of war will recognize their sons or husbands but the tattoos. But then a question arises. It seems like they could also tortured our Ukrainian POWs and made a tragic incident, just throwing these bodies at the crash site. Uh, just another question, excuse me, so why then they are not only international representatives, but also their own emergency services not allowed to the crash site? If you remember how Russia killed Ukrainian prisoners of war in Alenivka, they also didn't allow any international expert there. Strange, isn't it? Well, in short, trusting the Russians is to disrespect oneself, as the saying goes. 
First of all, it's all product for domestic consumption, where they truly believe in the myth of ukrofascists. And in general, a lot of things don't end add up in this story. But you know what else is interesting? Guess who Putin blamed for this incident? Putin made a loud statement in which he directly accused the USA. According to the investigation, he said the plane was shot down by missiles from an American installation. It has been established for certain that the plane was shot down by the American Patriot system. This was determined by the examination, he said. Well. Of course, we know that Russian examinations are the most accurate in the world. But even if it were true, this would not be the first plane shot down by American or British missiles, firstly. Secondly, the presence of Ukrainian prisoners of war on board the aircraft has not been proven. Anyway, I will tell you about new information regarding this incident later, if it appears. And it's not because I want to prove that Russia is lying. It's genuinely fascinating to watch how Russia invents new and new stories trying to convince the West, but primarily its own Russian population, that Ukraine is full of Nazis and they are doing a noble deed. Before I continue, I want to thank all of you who send coffees on Buy Me a Coffee and become Patreons. Subscribe to my Twitter page where I post regular updates about the situation in Ukraine and to my Instagram where I show the daily life in Ukraine. On January 31st, a series of explosions occurred in occupied Crimea, and locals reported a fire in the area of the Belbek airfield. The Ministry of Murders of the Russian Federation claimed to have shot down 20 Ukrainian missiles. It was claimed that debris fell on the territory of a military unit in the Republic of Crimea, where the Belbek airfield is located. Actually, the occupiers themselves admitted that five missiles found shelter on the territory of temporarily occupied Crimea. And they admitted including their own incompetence to timely disperse the flight composition. In particular, the aircraft that were damaged in Belbek itself. The territory of temporary occupied Crimea is predominantly based on tactical aviation of the Russians. These are various modifications that actually take off and terrorize both the Azov and the Black Sea areas. These are the directions in which the enemy occasionally arranges what they call pinpoint missile attacks and takes off to gather information. At least three enemy aircraft, as well as personnel, were destroyed, said the spokesperson of the Ukrainian Air Force, Yuri Ignat. The best confirmation is satellite images, where you can discern something. But even better confirmation is the obituaries in Russian public pages. It's what they themselves admit and publish information about the damage, at least there were three aircraft, then some personnel were destroyed as well. On February 1st, the Russian missile boat Ivanovets was destroyed. The head of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, said that Ukrainian military forces destroyed the Russian missile boat Ivanovets using domestically produced sea drones Magura V-5 a tactic of a group strike by unnamed systems against the enemy vessel in the open sea was applied. According to Budanov, the attack resulted in six direct hits by the sea drones to halt the ship. As a result of the damage, the boat retreated and sank. 
the cost of such a boat is around 70 uh, million dollars moreover during the strike the enemy lost the entire ammunition and the crew on the boat up to 40 sailors of the russian black sea fleet could have been on board uh, the missile uh, boat ivanovets Primarily, data suggests that the search and rescue operations conducted by the enemy was unsuccessful. Well, the Russian crew can continue to enjoy scuba diving at the bottom of the Black Sea and at the same time examine the cruiser Moskva and the small shrimps and little fish around it. Look at this photo. The State Border Guard Service of Ukraine published an archive photo of the Russian missile boat Ivanovets, this one, which Ukraine destroyed in occupied Crimea. They said, we thank our brothers in arms from the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine for restoring historical justice and enlisting the Russian top Ivanovets into the submarine fleet, they added. The photo shows Balaklava Bay, February 2014. The border guards know that the Russian boat, armed with anti-ship missiles, threatens a sea guard boat of the state border service. And the border boat, although small, but shows indomitability and confidence that everything will be Ukraine. And now about the situation on the front. The Russians intensify the assault on Avdiivka from the north and south. Deep State notes that the Russians have advanced a kilometer from the side of the village of Vesela. Russia's positions from the flanks are approaching the Avdiivka quarry. The American ISW report that Russian troops have advanced 1.25 kilometers in this area. Moreover, the Russians have moved into the cottage areas in the northeast of Avdivka. There is also progress by the Russians on the southern approach to Avdivka in the area of Opetna. And it is reported that fierce battles for each house are taking place in Pervomaisky. Well, that's it for today, guys, and I want to thank all of you for supporting Ukraine, watching Ukrainian content, and if you like this video, you can support the channel's development on Patreon or buy me a coffee. See you soon, and Slava Ukraini!